TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. RDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi reveals that since the operation Waves Breaker was launched, over 1,500 terror operatives were successfully apprehended. EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell acknowledges that the latest Iranian response to his document has dimmed hopes for a revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid reveals that Washington has greenlighted Jerusalem to thwart an Iranian nuclear threat. RDF, ISA, or Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counterterrorism activity overnight, during which 10 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. During the course of the activities, which were performed in the West Bank regions of Judea and Samaria, a number of exchanges of gunfire were reported when armed Palestinian militants reportedly opened fire toward the Israeli troops. And while one Palestinian militant was reportedly killed in the exchange, alongside at least 12 others who sustained wounds, no injuries were reported among the Israeli forces. Meanwhile, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi revealed that since the launch of Operation Wavesbreaker, 1,500 terror operatives have been arrested and as a result, hundreds of terror attacks were successfully averted. We came to the war in the war in the war of terror. The war of terror is a major and major and major. The result is now, for five years, 1,500 terror attacks and a lot of war in the war. General Kochavi went on to criticize the Palestinian Authority's flimsiness in areas under its control as the root cause which enables terror to flourish and spread so easily. The top Israeli military officer further asserted the IDF's intention to persist with Operation Waste Breaker and if deemed necessary, to widen its scale. Turning to Berlin, where Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog, in an address to the Bundestag plenum this morning, stressed to Germany's lawmakers that while Jerusalem does not fear criticism, it shall always insist that its critics stick to the truth. Israel has also become a powerful engine of pan-regional partnership in the Middle East. The Abraham Accords, joining earlier peace accords and endeavors for normalization, dialogue and rapprochement, have made Israel a prime mover of close neighborly relations, of prosperity and of unprecedented growth in our region. We have never feared criticism. We have never prevented criticism. But we shall always insist on one thing for our critics, to stick to the truth. Israel's outreach for peace is genuine. Our warm and deep relations with our neighbors are genuine. And so is the great value that they are bringing our whole region and the world. This is genuine. Israel has always aspired and will continue to aspire to good neighborliness and peace with all states and nations in the Middle East and, of course, also with our Palestinian neighbors. This is an objective so full of hope and faith that we have never relinquished nor shall we ever relinquish. It requires us and it also requires the Palestinians to look directly at reality and to make every effort to change it for the better. The Israeli head of state underscored that a change for the Palestinians would warrant an immediate and deliberate end of terror activities. President Herzog, whose host country is also an active participant in the nuclear talks with Iran, also seized the opportunity to reiterate Jerusalem's deep concern over Tehran's pursuit of nuclear weapons and urged the family of nations to act against it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Israel is a party to the international effort to block the radical forces sowing terror, grief, and devastation and seeking to menace everyone in the world. Even in a generation, even right now, dark forces of hate led by Iran threaten not only Israel and not only stability in the Middle East, but the global order itself. Here, at this important forum in Berlin, I call on the family of nations to work firmly and assertively against Iran and its plans to develop nuclear weapons. The Israeli president further highlighted the inconceivable and unabashed rhetoric which emanates from the Islamic Republic of Iran. The possession of weapons of mass destruction by a UN member state that calls on a daily basis for the annihilation of another UN member state is simply inconceivable. Threats and endeavors to annihilate Israel are inconceivable. The guideline must be clear. A state that denies the Holocaust, a state that acts out of hatred and belligerency, a state that threatens the state of Israel's right to exist, is ineligible to sign deals that will only embolden it, is ineligible for kickbacks or funds, is ineligible for concessions under any circumstances. The international community must stand on the right side of history, set clear conditions, impose fierce and essential sanctions, create an imperable buffer between Iran and nuclear capabilities, it must act and not back down. The State of Israel will defend itself and will fight by all means necessary against threats to it and to its citizens. I call on the whole world, don't stand idly by. It is important to know that after the Iranian foreign ministry announced yesterday that it would not forego on its prerequisite demand to close open IAEA probes into nuclear materials that were uncovered from undeclared locations in Iran, EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell, who is the technical coordinator for the talks with Iran, confessed that the latest Iranian response to his document has dimmed hopes for an any imminent breakthrough. Look, let me remind, on the past 8th of August, it means almost one month ago, I tabled a carefully balanced text, taking into account all position of all parties. At a certain moment, my responsibility as coordinator is to say, that's enough. This is the most balanced text I can produce, taking into account all point of views. This test was very well received. And I got a positive feedback from all partners. Then we started a process of uh, inter interaction, you know, it's an interactive, interactive process. And uh, an interactive process is good if it converges. I mean, if the positions are closer after the interaction end than before. And they were converging. They were converging to a closer position. And the initial requests that they received were reasonable from both parts, and they were taken on board without altering the text fundamentally. But then the last interaction is not converging, <laughs> it's diverging. And the positions are not closer, that's very much worrisome. If the process doesn't converge, uh, it, the, the, the whole process is in, is in danger. So I have to say that uh, the last, uh, the last uh, answer I got, if the purpose is to close the deal quickly, if the purpose is that, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not going to help it. The top European Commission diplomat went on to stress that while consultation will persist, including by attempting to see whether the U.S. in particular could practically agree to Iranian demands, he has lost confidence in prospects for the deal's revival. So what I'm doing to keep consulting with all other GCPA participants 
and in particular the US, because it's a request that has to be fulfilled by the US in particular, in particular, not the only one, and on how to proceed. But I'm sorry to say that uh, I am less confident today than 28 hours before about the conversions of the negotiation process and about the prospects of closing, of closing the deal right now. Turning to Israel's southern Air Force base of Nevatim, where Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid conducted a tour of the IAF F-35 Golden Eagle Squadron and received a security briefing from the commander of the Israeli Air Force, Major General Tomer Bar, after which Lapid underscored that Jerusalem, with Washington's backing and approval, will do whatever is necessary to thwart Tehran's nuclear threat. עדיין מוקדם מדי לדעת אם אכן הצלחנו לבלום את הסכם הגרעין, אבל ישראל ארוחה לכל איום ולכל תרחיש. אם איראן תמשיך לנסות, היא תגלה את ידה הארוכה ואת יכולותיה של ישראל, נמשיך לפעול בכל הגזרות נגד הטרור, נגד מבקשי רעתנו. כפי שסוכם ביני לבין הנשיא ביידן, יש לנו חופש פעולה מלא לעשות כל מה שנמצא לנכון כדי למנוע את האפשרות שאיראן תהפוך לאיום גרעיני. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.